Okay, so we started our production process by preparing our tray of soil, which I've got here. And, and even though it's a really nice sunny day outside, uh, I'm a little hungover today, and so I thought this would be a good time to take a look at sowing. So what we're going to do is we're going to sow some sunflower shoots today. I'm going to walk through uh, the process and just talk about some of the things uh, as we go along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull stuff out here. So I've got everything sort of here. I actually moved my watering trays down here. Pull this out. Got my tray ready to go for sewing. Picked myself up a cute little watering can. It's just perfect. I'll talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna pull my seed out here. All ready to go. And then two other things I've got. I've got a bowl where I'm gonna soak my seed, and I've got a colander here. So first things first. Um, if you've watched any of my commercial production videos, you'll know that I'm very um, insistent on really good hygiene and sanitation. And when we talk about commercial production, one of the important steps, or a number of the important steps, um, involve uh, hygiene and sanitizing not just our equipment, but also our seeds. So for the purposes of home production and my own comfort, I am not going to sanitize these seeds. I'm not going to put Put them through any bleach or parasitic acid solution. I purchase seed from Mums, which is a company that specializes in sprouting seed, and they test their seed before it comes in. So I know it has been vetted already. From a commercial perspective, it's a good idea to, to, to do a second um, sanitation. For home use, I wouldn't worry about it. What I am going to do though, is I'm going to rinse that seed. Um, I like clean seed, and this seed is clean, but before I sow it, I just like to get in there and rinse any debris off, anything like that, uh, before I sow. So it's kind of the first step in the process. What I'm going to do after I rinse the seed is I'm going to soak the seed in water, and, and then, it's, then we're going to sow it. So the seed needs to soak for a, a certain period of time, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. So I'm going to grab my measuring cup here. I do my sowing by volume. I don't do it by weight. And, and the Main reason being is it's just way quicker. You know, if I want to do a specific weight, I've got to get my scale out, I have to kind of tweak things. When I'm doing it by volume, I'm just kind of getting this out, getting this kind of to where I want it. I'm not particular about getting exact, and then it's ready to go. So for sunflower, we're gonna start with a sowing rate of 250 milliliters of seed. So I haven't used this seed before, but that's kind of a place where I often start is, is around 250 milliliters. And I'll know fairly quickly once it's on the soil what it's going to look like, but as we go through the process, I'll definitely take a measure of, of how things look, how the spacing looks, and then when it comes to harvest time, I'll cut it and weigh that harvest so I get a sense of what kind of yield I'm getting from this um, amount of seed. Uh, I don't know the weight of the seed. Uh, we did look at this in an earlier video, we did the calculations, so we know the exact cost of a cup of seed. And the other thing is, I, I am going to look for what I would call like the sprout to seed ratio. So, for an example, if I have 100 grams of seed, how many grams of sprouts am I getting? And I'm looking for about a, a you know, a 5 or 7 to 1 ratio. So for every 100 grams of seed, I'm getting at least 500 grams of, of product. That's for sunflower, that's going to vary between different ones. So that's really important. So I'm going to start the process. I've measured out my seed. It's going into my colander. And for all intents and purposes, I'm done with this. This can get put away and um, clear up that space. If I don't need something, I don't want it out. This is a big bin. All I need to do is scoop my seeds out of it and move it out of the way. Realistically, I didn't even need to pull it up on the table. As I get into more of a routine, I'm going to pull it out, scoop out my seed, stick it back in, and it's never going to come out of there. Okay, I'm going to head over and give this a rinse in the sink. I'll edit this part out.
Okay, so I've gone through, given this a rinse. I just rinsed it for about 30 seconds. Uh, really just sort of, you know, ran water over it, shook it around, gave it a good shake, let it drain out. Hmm. The coffee really helps the hangover. It's just a little hangover. So now what I'm going to do, this seed is going to go into my bowl here. So this is the bowl that I'm going to soak my seed in. If I was on a commercial scale, I'd be doing this in big bins, and depending on your scale, there's whole commercial systems for, for soaking and, and mixing seed and whatnot. So when this goes. So I've rinsed this seed, but I have not induced germination by doing so. Um, if I was to lay this seed out onto here and let it dry again, I could probably stick it right back in that bin without any effect. Germination really gets... Um, really gets instigated by this, the seed being exposed to, to water over a longer period of time and some warmth. If I soaked this in cold water and put it in the fridge, not going to germinate. But soaking it in, in warm water and putting it on a tray of uh, soil and sticking it in a warm windowsill, it's going to germinate very, very quickly. So there's a lot of different approaches to uh, germinating and sowing seed. Uh, and there's kind of two methods. One is soaking the seed for anywhere from one hour to 12 hours and then laying it on top of the soil, covering it up and letting it go. This is the method we're going to do. And then other people, you know, they soak the seed, uh, they rinse it and drain it, uh, and then they actually keep it in a bowl or a vessel until it starts to germinate. Um, I'm not a very big fan of this method. Uh, the advantage it does have is you could take a lot of seed and and, and germinate it um, in ideal conditions. Um, so you don't need, so once I lay the seed out on this tray, if I want to do 100 trays, I need a lot of space. But if I did 100 trays worth of seed in a bucket, I could do that in a very small space and I could control that. However, any advantages you gain from that, you're going to lose by, by then taking the seed, which is going to have the radical, the tip of the, of the root sticking out, you're going to damage some of those radicals in, in your sowing, and then when you lay them out, they're going to be oriented in all sorts of different directions. And it takes at least a day for that radical to then sort of orient itself downward and get rooted into the soil. So I see this method time and time again. I've tried it. I've never gotten good results. I highly recommend uh, soaking, rinsing, and sowing your seeds as quickly as possible. In terms of how long to soak your seed, this can vary by a uh, lot of seed. We, in my first year, years of doing this production, I had a seed, a sunflower seed, that I would soak overnight and it was beautiful. Um, I, uh, one of my next batches, you soak it overnight and the seed would die. So I've learned usually two hours is all most seeds need. And I could either do it in just regular water, or if I think it needs more, I do it in a bit of warm water, especially in the colder seasons. So limiting your soaking time is actually going to make your system much easier. And as you soak your seed and it comes to life, that seed is going to start to need oxygen. And you don't get oxygen in water. So I like to get the seed out of the water as quickly as possible. So my seed here is ready. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some water in here so we can start the germination process. So simple as that. Uh, I've only got one tray's worth in this bowl. And the reason I like this is sunflower seeds float. And if you have them in, say, a bucket, a lot of seed in a bucket, a lot of the seed will float up above um, where it will actually be soaking. So this bowl actually keeps everything really exposed to the water. I use slightly warm water in here. Uh, it is for early November. I, I don't keep my apartment super warm. Uh, so the, uh, the warm uh, water will, will induce germination a lot more effectively and successfully. And my, one of my major approaches is your germination needs to be in optimum conditions. If you don't have optimum conditions for the first three days of production, it's hard to recover. Whereas if you do have really good germination conditions and your conditions later aren't ideal, you're going to get a better crop. You need to get your crop off to a good start in order to get a good, uh, good crop. That's super crucial, so, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to let this soak probably, I'm probably just going to let this soak for an hour um, because I'm uh, impatient. And we'll edit that stuff out. And I want to show, I, I did a video of this earlier that I'm going to post elsewhere, but I did do some germination testing of, of some seed. 
and you can see this seed here is about uh, this is six days here, and I don't know how well you can see that. There you go. And so the point being here is I didn't soak these seeds at all. All I basically did was put them on the towel, cover them up with the towel, wet the towel, and keep it moist. And that's basically what we're going to do here. I'm inducing germination here because I want good even germination. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to wet my soil so it's it's in a stage that's ready for germination. And then when I place my seed on top, we're going to cover this up and, and we'll talk about that as we get to that part of the process. Now, one of the questions is how much water should your soil hold? And there's a principle I kind of use um, for a lot of things and 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 it is you want to use the minimum amount of water possible to get the best result. And the, way, the reason I say that is that if, as soon as you have too much water, you're introducing all sorts of problems. And basically, you need to think of soil as having two parts. The solid part, which you see, and then the, the space in between the solids, which is the pore space. Because that's where the water is going to sit. But the other thing that's in that pore space is, is your gases. And that includes oxygen, and roots need oxygen in order for a plant to grow. So if you fill all those, this soil with too much water, you're basically going to drown your, your crops. And, and I'm sure you've all had that experience. Often when we want a crop to do well, we want to do something, and so we water. And in the beginning, overwatering is a really good way to, to, to destroy a crop. So don't do that. So there's two concepts in soil science we talk about. One of them is saturation. And saturation, as I'm sure you would guess, is when all the pore space is filled with water, and that's not what you want. Consider that a flooded field. And there's an, another concept called field capacity. And when we look at pore space in soil, we think of it as having micropores and macropores, so bigger and smaller pores. And so when we think about field capacity, we actually just want the little pores filled with soil. We want with water. We want lots of water in there, but we also want lots of uh, gas space. And that's going to be our ideal conditions. It's going to be a little more moist for sure than the, the, the soil moisture we talked about while sowing, but not so moist that it's, it's going to be dripping wet. The way I tell, and you'll be able to do this very quickly, about how much water is in the tray is by lifting the tray. And really it's just from the weight of the tray that you're going to get a sense of when it's too heavy, when it's too light, and when it's just right. And this one actually, funnily enough, feels pretty good. I have here a tray of wheatgrass that I had before. It hasn't had water in ages, and I can feel it's quite a bit lighter than this tray. And if I was growing this, I would definitely be going, oh, like this tray needs water. So this is something you learn over time, and because you're doing weekly or twice weekly batches, you learn this stuff very quickly. So this here, yeah, it's got some good moisture in there, so I know I don't need to add a, a ton of water. But I know I need the soil surface to be moist because that's where my seed is going to be. So even if the moisture within there is pretty good, I need to make sure the soil is moist. So these trays that we talked about for watering and we'll use for watering in the future are also good for sowing because I can water on here without making a mess. I've just got a little mini watering can, which is actually quite ideal for this, but I'm going to try some other methods in, in future postings. And so I'm just going to get in here and I'm going to water this just nice and lightly. Try not to do too much at one time because I don't want any pooling on the soil surface. I'm just going across here making sure it all gets pretty moist. So admittedly, that might have been a little too much water, but it feels pretty good. It's a little on the heavy side. I'm not too worried. Um, once again, I'm not doing commercial production. It's the first tray I've sowed in, in many, many months. Um, and yeah, I know this is a nice light soil. So, Basically now, my soil is ready to go. My soil is moist on the inside, it's moist on the top, and this is what we would consider the germination surface. This is a, a, a wet surface that holds the water. So when we sow, now what we're going to do is we're going to press the seeds into this soil, and we're going to mimic the seed being buried in the soil by covering it with another tray and putting weight over top of it. Now, Intuitively, when we sow seeds, we're used to putting them in the ground and covering them with soil. And this makes sense when you're growing stuff in the ground. But here it doesn't. And the reason being is if the seed is under the soil, when, 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 a, when a dicot germinates, which is what sunflowers are, it's the seed that comes out. 
the root goes down and it pushes the seed up and the seed opens up to be the first two leaves. And if you bury that seed with any soil, what you find is some soil comes up with it. Now over watering, um, you'll, you'll rinse some of that off, but basically like, you don't want soil on your crop. The more soil that's on it, the more work you have to do to get it clean. Maybe not a big deal on a home scale, but on a commercial scale, that's a cost. And you want to be able to harvest your stuff and get it packaged as quickly and efficiently as possible. And having soil on there makes it really hard to do. So do your best to not get soil on your crops. This crop is mainly going to be underwatered, so there's going to be a few things we're going to need to do. But as we get to that part of the process, you'll see that. So now my, my uh, tray here is ready to go. My seed is soaking. I'm going to let this soak a little longer, and then we're going to come back and do our sowing and get things covered up and ready to go for production. Okay, so our seed has soaked for, I'm not even going to tell you how long because I cheated. I'm just, I'm so impatient today, and uh, I have faith I don't need to soak this for an hour or two hours. I think it's going to be just fine. So let's pretend I soaked it for an hour. Let's just do that for, for effect. Um, and we will keep an eye on that. Like, I, I have no doubt um, that it's going to be fine. One of the reasons I'm doing these videos in real time is so you can kind of see what, what the actual process looks for. Often I do this kind of thing and it's very structured and staged and perfect. And the idea is to see what this looks like in real life. So um, someday you may be doing this with a hangover. So, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to basically sow my seed. And as I talked about before, we're sowing the seed onto the surface of the soil. So I basically, my method, and you'll, there's all sorts of ways to do this. There's different methods, different styles. I've just been doing this for so long. This is just the habit I got into. So I get the seed onto the top of the soil like this, and then I just spread it out with my hands. And you get a sense for the feel of this, and when you're doing, you know, 100 trays at a time, you just get a sense of how quickly you can, you can do this. And yeah, once you get into a roll, you can move really, really fast. So my goal here is to evenly distribute the seed over the soil surface, and I'm, and I'm quite picky about this. I don't always go, I go very close but not right to the edge because uh, stuff at the edge doesn't germinate as well. I really try to make sure I have no real blank spots in there because that's just wasted space. And then another thing I don't want to have is, is like clumps. And, and, and basically, you know, open space is a waste and the clumps is too competitive. Uh, if you have too much, you've got too much rooting competition and you've got too much competition for light above the surface. So, so this is my tray here. It's, Give me a little bit of a close-up. I know the light's not that great, but this is really um, this is the soil surface fairly well covered. I would say about 95% covered. And for fun, I'll take a picture here and we'll post this somewhere so you can get a sense. Now there's a couple ways to determine what your seeding rate should be. So if you recall, I sowed 250 milliliters of sunflower. And if I was to really want to determine exactly what my rate should be, I would sow multiple trays. And I would do one at 225, 250, 275, 300. And I would create this range. And what you would see is as, as, as your seeding rate goes up, your yield goes up until a certain point and then your yield starts to drop. So your goal, if you want to chart that out, is to, is to find that sweet spot, and I think 25 milliliter increments is fine, where your yield continues to increase, um, and then may, maybe you get a dip. So you do you actually create a graph that goes like that. And what happens, imagine like I just had piles and piles of seeds on here. You'd be like, well, of course you're not going to get a great yield with that. There's too much competition, and it's a waste of seed. So sometimes as that point, that point might not be your most efficient use of seed, but it's going to give you the highest yield per tray area. And you need to think about that one a little bit. You might be able to get a lower yield in some trays and get a better seed to sprout ratio. I'm a fan of getting the maximum amount of yield out of every basically every square centimeter that I'm using. So here's my tray. My tray is basically ready. Um, I would typically give it a good water, but uh, here's another reason why I like doing this stuff live. Um, I don't particularly like this watering can. I can't do fine watering with it. I can't water with it uh, without overdoing it. And so what I've ordered is a little 
a little watering spout that you put on the top of a pop bottle. And it's going to be ideal for just giving this a final watering that just gives it a cleaning. And I find after that second watering I get a much better look at the at this seed on here and I can see my seeding density. So I look at this tray, I'm like, yeah, that's the right seeding density. I've, I've sown enough trays that I know that. And that's one of the things you're looking for when you're sowing a tray, like how does that look? Um, because it's new seed, because there's variation in size, I might see some things I don't like, but I, I'm pretty confident I'm gonna get a pretty good um, crop from this. So now we basically need to, I would say, bury our seed. It's on the soil surface and if we left it like this, it would dry out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cover it with another tray. So we're doing multiple things here. I'm pressing this in a little bit because I want the seed to have really good contact with the soil because it's through the soil that the water is going to move up and keep the seed moist. This is crucial for germination. Uh, a challenge in farming is you sow a crop in the ground, you water, but you get hot weather and the soil dries out repeatedly and you get poor germination. We cannot risk poor germination. We will not recover from that. We have an 8 to 10 day growing cycle. You cannot have any, any gaps. So we're going to go through a number of things here. So one is uh, the soil is nice and moist, the seed was moist when it went on there, now we're covering this up. So this is basically buried under this layer of soil. The next thing I'm going to do is put some pressure on this. And this really is the key to a good crop. These are little, uh, these are uh, 8 by 16 blocks that I get from Home Depot. They fit perfectly inside this tray, they distribute the weight really, really well. They weigh 15 pounds each. And at least a few of you are freaking out right now about how much weight that is for those sunflowers to push up. Um, let me assure you they will have no problem doing that. And in fact, just to be an arrogant prick, I'm going to put another one on here. Because in general, I find the more weight the better. And I can tell you, if, if I had the time, energy, patience, and resources, you could lay a whole bunch of trays, sunflower trays out, lay across them for several days, and those things will raise you up. There's thousands of seeds on here. Collect individually, they're weak, but collectively, they're very strong. What I find with more weight, and the reason I am doing this, is because the weight balances out the, the different sizes. And so you usually get a more uniform crop by having more weight on there. And so because I've, I've kvetched about this seed a lot, uh, and it's a variable size, um, I'm going to try the two, two on here. So this, this tray is now sewed and ready to go, and I have nothing more to do on this until I uncover it. I'm not going to pull the blocks off and take a look. I'm not going to pull off the top and water it. There's enough water in there within the soil and on the seeds already that is, that is going to keep, um, allow that to germinate. So we've got a bunch of things happening here. So we've got the cover here that's going to the that's going to keep the seed pressed into the soil. We've got the weight here that's going to make sure there's good pressure to maintain that. The tray here keeps the light from getting in. So as the seed germinates, it doesn't start uh, photosynthesizing yet, and that's that's a good thing. It's also going to trap the moisture in there because it can't evaporate out. So there's a lot of things that are happening by covering it up here, and they all play a role. So it's really important to keep all those things in mind. So now this tray is basically ready. I'm just going to bring it up over here. It's very heavy. So typically I would actually put the tray over here and then I would put the weights on afterwards. But for video purposes, that's the method I'm choosing. So that is now germinating. I'm going to make sure I get this on here nice and even. So how long that stays in that state really depends on temperature. The warmer the temperature, the quicker that's going to germinate. Um, like I said, I'm not keeping my place too warm, so I'm guessing we might be around four days for that. Uh, we'll see. I, I actually like a quicker process than that, but I think four days for home production is fine. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, I'll do some videos over the next few days and some pictures so we can kind of take a look. Because uh, one of the major questions that people have is, when do I uncover my crop? When do I do that? And so we'll talk about that as we get to that stage. So now I'm basically done with that. Uh, if you want to be really meticulous, this would be a thing you would record this in, in a spreadsheet somewhere. You would record the date, the crop, your seeding rate, um, and then also the lot number. You know, that's a good thing to have there. So it depends how much 
record keeping you want to do. If you're only doing a couple trays a week, record keeping is very easy and it's through really good record keeping and documentation that you really get to know the process. You know, you can really see results that way. So uh, I do recommend that if you're, if you're one of those record keeping types, definitely to develop some, some methods to do so. Um, I actually don't have a lot of cleanup to do. I'll, I'll give this a little bit of a rinse and a dry and then I'll sort of slide them back in here. I think in my original video I was keeping them up here, but I realized I actually have a really good space here to keep these, and so it makes things a little bit cleaner here. It is, a, it is a Friday today, and so I'm guessing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I would look at uncover these on Monday night or maybe Tuesday morning. And you'd be amazed how much of a difference can happen between an evening and a morning. So that's what we're going to look for. Um, we'll let that keep going. And I might do a, little, uh, a few little videos in between if there's things that I notice that we can keep, uh, keep an eye out for. So that is an overview of sewing. I, I know that's quite a long video, but I really wanted to, to, to cover a lot of principles within that. Um, I know you're probably sick of hearing my voice uh, by this point, but um, I think I covered most of what you need to know for a good sewing for this crop. Now in the future, we'll look at other crops. A lot of the lighter seeded crops we sew a little bit differently, and we'll look at some options there. Uh, but we would still do much the same thing. We would still cover them up. Much of it's the same. There's just a few little differences. So yeah, we're going to let this uh, grow. We'll let them germinate and then we'll uncover this in a few days and look at the next step in the process.